Hey everybody, Brian from Witch Doctor here. Just want to do a quick segment on Railgun. Just kind of show you what it looks like and a little bit about how to set it up. And then some quick video on uh, on how to shoot it. Okay, so looking at the Railgun, uh, typically Railguns come in two parts. You have your bottom part, which is a super heavy, super stable platform. Uh, and then the second part is your upper, which rides on these pins right here and I will show you how that goes here in a second but first when you set up the rail gun a couple of things take your bottom out first and I use these little rubber feet these are really good to keep the rail gun stable place them into the uh, spike at the bottom there um, that keeps it extremely stable the other thing is too is use a level uh, go ahead and level off the base is usually what I do and so but in order to do that usually loosen one of these sides and either go up or down oh this one needs to go down okay and then just make sure it's level that's all um, I use oil for the pins and the type of oil that I use is this RCBS case lube 2 works really good on the pins Get some nice and oiled up get a really smooth uh, back and forth with your rail so that's a lubrication that i use on the on the pins here other thing is is um if you're shooting you know up a hill or down a hill uh, or, or up or down whatever it may be i use this uh, surgical uh, flexible uh, rubber kind of uh, if you can see there see how it flexes really easy but it always comes back to form um, I use that I'll stick it on the front thing here wrap it around my elevation this is for elevation over here um, and then when I stick the top on there's a little ring in the bottom of the top and this goes around it and then what that does is if you're kind of shooting on an uphill or downhill angle it helps to return the upper part to battery all the way uh, and at my home range here in uh, Tacoma Washington it absolutely is an uphill uh, shooting um, even at 100 it's slightly uphill so we have to use uh, this system here to help sling the top part back to uh, battery the other thing about the lower is these this is your um, this is your vertical, I'm sorry, this is your um, horizontal adjustments. So your left to right. Uh, so turning it this way will move the, move the base um, and move the upper in a certain direction. And then what you do is when you're actually shooting is you tighten this knob down so that there's no slack um, going on with the right or left. See so yeah, how that's now that's like fully tensioned. So you won't get any kind of right or left slack at this point once you get you know to wherever you need to shoot and then you can of course loosen it up and then bring it over some more so you can do your your uh, horizontal that way um, and then like i said this is the vertical here for this particular one you just pull this knob up and then you you turn it up or down uh, for your vertical and then you click this down to lock one other handy thing that they have is this right here um, which helps you basically bring it up or down um, so that when you're on a target you can switch from your cider target at the bottom to your record target above all with just a movement of a of a little knob there so you have to adjust it with these so when you're at 100 your adjustments gonna be a lot smaller you're just gonna kind of move up and down a little bit because you're so close and your angle is so close from your cider to your record but at 200 it's going to be a little bit greater because your angle from your cider to your record is, is is greater so anyway after you have the base set up on your rubber feet then you go ahead and get your upper and all this is really heavy so <laughs> you ready for that so then you place your upper on these pins here Okay, and that's the upper part now. 
And as I mentioned before, if you do need to have um, assistance with return to battery, you can use one of these rubber tubes and then it attaches to something below here. There's a little, oh yeah, you can see it right there. Anyway, so see how it goes back if you're shooting up? This rubber thing here just helps it kind of return to battery. Anyway, so the top part, again, these um, legs here sort of connect to those pins. And then there's also a connection to the pin right there. And you can see that there. Um, the barrel rests in what's called a barrel block. Typically, the barrels that they use for rail guns are really thick. Um, I've seen, you know, 1.25 inch diameter up to 1.5 inch diameter. Um, I think I go with 1.45 inch diameter. And my barrel block is six inches long with five bolts on each side. And I just bolt these, I torque these down to 40 foot pounds. Um, and that seems to be fine to hold the barrel. Um, and I usually give it about four and a half inches behind the barrel block. So I clamp it um, sort of near the back of the barrel. Um, the barrel is held by 40 foot pounds on 10 of these five bolts, five on each side. And I could easily torque this action in. I think I torqued it to 45. Um, I can easily torque it in without actually turning the barrel. I can actually pull this action off, you know, with 45 foot pounds uh, plus of force and it will not turn the barrel. Um, with all 10 of these, you know, clamping down on the barrel at 40 foot pounds, uh, keeps the barrel from moving. Anyway, so yeah, and then you just screw your action in. This action here is my Bat Nouveau that I use on my bag rifle. Uh, so I pull it out of my bag rifle and I take off the scope and then I throw it on the rail. Um, it is a drop port. So what I do once you fire and you're cycling your round out is I put um, something below it like this towel here with with extra uh, reinforcement around the side so it doesn't slip around on me. And put your bolt in. And so when I'm doing this, I put my thumb on the shroud, pull up, back, and the brass just drops. Okay, so that's basically how you use your action there. Your trigger is Kind of, kind of going to hang out. So I, I think people get a little anxiety about that when they see, you know, just just trigger hanging. Um, some people make really robust and large trigger guards. I just decided to use the trigger guard that I use on my standard bag gun, and then just cut uh, these little tubes to uh, hold it in place, and it does just fine. Uh, but I see a lot of people with these massive trigger guards and th that's fine. That That's great. Go ahead and have one, but um, I don't really think I need one. So I just did something simple there. Anyway, and then um, the scope, usually you'll see it near the center or slightly off center. Mine is centered and the mounts are pretty, pretty big and they're pretty high up. So you got to make sure you got a good angle downward uh, with like this, I think is a 20 MOA downward rail and then um, I have these Burris adjustable rings so I can put you know I can angle this scope any way I want um, and one other cool feature that I have on mine is this little extra scope <laughs> what this cool thing does is it bolts to the side and then I can have a second scope to actually look at my flags so you know, to be honest with you, this primary scope, yeah, you need it to see that, okay, my shots are going on target and kind of where are they going on target. But once you make that determination and you figured out what conditions you're going to shoot in or, or whatnot, um, then you can just look through this scope to keep an eye on your flags. Um, I'm fortunate I can see all my flags out to 200 pretty easily, but I do bolt this on there because once in a while, we get, you know, rainy or a hot day and it does become a little bit hard uh, to see some flags. And so this thing really enables me to see the flags a lot clearer, um, especially at two out to 200, the ones that are on the 
you know, 100 to 200 yard line, uh, this thing definitely helps. So that I'm able to see really well in, in low visibility conditions. In high vis conditions, I usually don't even bolt it on, but always bring it. Um, it is a great thing to have, especially if your eyesight's bad and stuff like that, it, and you're, you're struggling to figure out, man, is there a wind down range? This will help you out quite a bit. So that is a feature that I really like about this particular railgun. Um, it is a Kensler lower. Ken, Craig Kensler is the person who makes made the lower. Um, and it's fairly unique because it has this massive brass piece in front here, and it's super heavy, um, rides perfectly. And then the top, the upper, is is a young upper. So this is kind of a hybrid railgun with two different railgun makers <laughs> making, you know, um, the upper and, and the lower. So it's kind of an interesting thing. But shoots really well. Uh, Wand Sniper King in 2020. So it's very capable, gets the job done. So anyway, that's just the basic anatomy of a railgun. Uh, not terribly complicated i mean it's it's doable if if you know even if you're a shooter who's thinking man this thing is outrageous i don't know you know <laughs> if i would ever shoot something like that um it's it, you know i would look into these they're incredible pieces of machinery um if you ever want to do you know testing and you want to control for as many variables as possible this is one useful piece of equipment to help control for some things that you can't really control for in a bad gun. Uh, your, your point of impact is, um, your, your, I'm sorry, your, your aim point is going to be highly controlled for because it returns.